Come on. There we go.
very touching of hands is training, training, training. Make sure that your people are trained on the policies and procedures. Make sure they know what they can do. And even more important, what they cannot do. Because, for example, nobody can suck a GPS just because the person driving the car was living in eighth grade and now I'm very curious to see where she is. Nobody cares. That's not something that uh, allows you or anybody else to suck a GPS. So in today's um, presentation, Sean, are you impressed? <laughs> in today's presentation, we're going to focus mostly on GPS uh, policies, processes, procedures, and people. Uh, we're going to try to increase the, the efficiency and reduce your um, uh, the risk for your operation. So the blind spots, we're talking about the potential blind spots, how they're going to affect you, how you can monitor them, and uh, what action items you can, uh, you can take for them. So uh, let's speak, for example, about the uh, potential blind spot of misuse of GPS. I just gave the example of my friend. I can send you the presentation later. Thank you, Sam. Yeah. Um, user misuse, customer and action behaviors, uh, what you can do and what you cannot do are extremely important uh, when you're dealing with GPS tests. Uh, let's talk about uh, the first one. So the first and simple one is an operational thing. You have a car load. On your car, you have inventory of cars, obviously. Those cars are not being sold on a daily basis. I mean, you might get a car, you're very excited about it, you look at it at the auction and say, wow, that's going to be a hot seller. And then it sits on the road for 30 days. Now, what happens if I'm coming onto your lot? Your salesman, salesman did great, they called me, I came in for the appointment. Now he's walking into the lot, trying to start the car, and it's not starting. What an embarrassment. The salesperson is disappointed because he just spent, he or she spent a lot of time setting up this appointment. The person, obviously, who just lost the sale, I'm not going to buy a car from you, the car doesn't start, you just want to walk across the street, there's probably another car who pays you in there, that I can buy a car that you actually started from. Uh, how can GPS help? Most of the GPS companies are tracking the quality, the, the level of the battery of the car. So when I say we, I'm not talking about my company. We, as a GPS industry, can alert you if the car has no voltage on the battery. Now, if you combine that and GPS basic is the location based services, so I can combine the low voltage alert with the location of the lot, and you can get a daily report or a daily alert of all the cars that are on the lot with low voltage. Now, imagine yourself, the lot manager just goes to those cars, other than checking if the cars every day trying to start them, just goes to pinpoint those five cars with the low voltage and make sure that they have a decent battery, that it's safe. The battery is recharging, so when your potential customer is coming in for a test drive, the car is starting as it should. So again, not making you any money, but I'm making sure that you're not losing any sales. It's not your person, but your GPS. Um, the other, um, other uh, option uh, point or challenge that many dealers have, you have a lot full of cars, you may be noticed um, Right now, inventory is a bit less of a problem, but uh, a few months ago, inventory was a bit of a problem. That is only a problem, also always a problem. People are just coming at night and sleeping in the house. So, how can you overcome this problem? You have a GPS that you're using to start the winter up. Just make sure that all the cars on the lot are disabled during night. This way, I'm distracted. If I'm coming to the lot, I'm trying to hard, uh, skip the car, it's not going to start. So, again, GPS can save you and uh, reduce the number of cars that are being stolen from your lot. Not too fast, we're good. Um, the, next, uh, the next blind spot that costs you a lot of money are the income costs. Anybody that uh, is doing business in big cities, uh, Chicago, Dallas, any of the large cities, um, they have uh, the tendency to tow people, get them into the income box, and then they wait according to what the law allows them Usually it's the average of 14 to 15 days before they send you the notification that they have one of your cars. Why say no? You don't get a notification? No, on this <laughs> 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 I mean, she's doing this to me now, you don't have this problem. Um, the average uh, storage fee can range between 15 to 75 dollars a day. Uh, usually it requires 14 days. The, the, the date on the stamp from the mail will be the date of the, or the letter will be the day 14. Sometimes it can take another week or two before you get it. Usually it ties to a 600, 900 level fee that you need to pay because you need to pay for storage.
start feeling you, they want to talk to you, they for everything. Now, at this time, this promise is customer, they're already gone to the next dealer. They're not going to leave. Now, that's not their problem anymore. Now, you want to collateral that, you need to pay the income fee to release the car. So, how GPS can help you? The GPSs can track the location where the income goes out. You can get a daily report, letting you know which one of your cars are in the income block, and you can be proactive and go and release this car from the income block. Still, you're going to have to pay probably the tow fee, and you're going to have to pay a day or two of income, but that's small money relative to two weeks of income, of um, storage fee. Now, you can spend it to any point of interest that you care about. If you're recycling GPSs, so you can track all the, uh, the copper blocks. So if you're sending cars to the auction, make sure that your uh, team is removing the GPS before the car is being sent to the auction. Let's say that you have a Kia dealership, and I'm picking on Kia, no, nothing bad about them, uh, that are uh, buying cars from your customers, trading them in. Now, franchise dealerships, usually they will have your car at their loss, they will take probably 10 to 20 days before they're going to process a payout check. If you see that your car is located at a, a Kia dealership, reach out to them after two or three days. Hey, do you have my car? What about my, uh, my payout check? So again, not making you money, but making your cash flow come in quicker because you already lost this deal. You already lost this customer. But at least get your, get your check as soon as possible to make sure that, uh, that you're getting what is yours. So that's another great uh, uh, blind spot that the GPS can help you as a dealer operator make sure that um, uh, your collateral is uh, costing you less money than it should. Next, uh, next uh, blind spot or next item that the GPS can help you are with the inventory reports on the lot. So I'm assuming the majority of you are using a financial development company. You are right. Oh, no. no, not using small plan. If anybody is using small plan company, and Mr. Feynman here can help you, if you need anything, uh, they will charge you or they require you to report on what cars are on the lot and what cars were sold. Once a car was sold, you need to pay, pay off the, the small plan. Back in the day, the small plan company would send an employee that would literally touch each car, count them. Send the report, usually it costs you five to ten thousand a car. With the GPS, you can run a report, and most of the reputable GPSs are acceptable by Coleman Company. We can ship, uh, we can send them directly a report of all the cars that are on the lot. So uh, that are equipped with the GPS. So suddenly you're saving money on that aspect as well. So um, a side benefit is also you can just manage what, whatever inventory you have on the lot. So for inventory management, especially if you have more than one location, you can see which cars are in each one on the lot, which one moved from a lot to lot, so that's a very helpful uh, tool. And that's a very important one. We all know that cars are a driving piece of equipment on the street. Unfortunately, they get into accidents. And if you want to know if a car was if you were involved in an accident, you have few benefits that you get from this. I'm always saying the first one is a customer service. If I was involved in an accident and somebody that cares about me and my <coughs> told me to check how I'm doing and what's, uh, what's my situation, they will make me feel nice because uh, they can offer me uh, different transportation, they can offer me help with the tow. If you do CPI, uh, you definitely want the car to come to your lot. You don't want the car to go to, uh, to the franchise dealership to take care of it. So the accident notification is a huge one. Especially when uh, today we know that some of the insurance companies and the customers, if it's a uh, claim that is under a certain amount, they will send a check payout directly to, the, to Mr. or Mrs. Customer. I think if it's under $3,500, customer doesn't include the deposit to sign of the check. So unfortunately, many dealers find out that customers are check, uh, cashing the check, <coughs> not taking care of the car, because they don't care very much. And then three, five months down the road, you repossess the car because of lack of payment. You find that there is damage to the car because the car was involved in an accident. You call the insurance company, and here's your surprise. The insurance company tells you, hey, I already paid it out. It's not my problem anymore. We sent out the check. So you end up with no insurance payment, damage to the car, and at this point, customer was already repossessed, and he's like, whatever, I'm, I'm walking away. 
So um, by getting an accident notification, this is something that is very um, important for you guys. So again, as I said, if you do CPI, we can make sure the car comes to you. If you don't do CPI, we reach out to the insurance company. We'll make sure that you are the one that you know that you are in a motor and you need to get, um, uh, you need to have, they need to have taken a signature of the check. And of course, you can reach out to the customer. If it was a total loss, check what the car was sold to. It's an IAA. You need to start your process in uh, collecting payments and uh, maybe even offer the customer to buy a new car from you. So let's uh, um, make sure that check with your vendor if uh, if your CPS fine. And uh, this is a huge, uh, huge impact on the bottom line because, again, saving you lots of money. And Disclaimer that I didn't read at the beginning, I'm not an attorney and this is not the legal advice, but when you're using GPSs, it's extremely important to follow certain uh, processes and procedures. The first one is make sure that uh, you are signing or having your customer sign a GPS disclosure. The GPS disclosure needs to include everything that your GPS solution is doing. What do I mean? Um, if your GPS company is tracking mileage in order to let you know if a customer is excessively using make sure it's in the disclosure. If you're using starter interrupt, make sure it's in the disclosure. Um, if you're selling documents, for example, you're not in the state of Texas or Arizona, so I don't know how big the Spanish population is here, but if your uh, retail contract, uh, is, um, contract is in Spanish, make sure the GPS disclosure is in Spanish. If you do lease your pay here versus buy your pay here, make sure your GPS disclosure <coughs> is meeting your business um, profile. It's extremely important to go over the with the customer on the GPS disclosure to explain to them what it is. If you did start the interrupt, they need to understand setting the expectations on day one when customer is all excited and have the keys in his hand. That's the sweet spot that you need to explain to them about the GPS. And it's pretty simple explanation. We have an agreement. I provide you transportation, you provide me with payment. If payments are not made on time, I can take action towards your uh, transportation method. The GPS disclosure determines all those things, and you need to look at it not as, oh, I'm telling the customer that there is a GPS in the car. The GPS disclosure is to protect you. That's a very important uh, piece of making sure that you are protected. Because if you're going to get audited and there's no disclosures in place, you need to keep them in the deal chapter, you need to secure clothes, make sure that it's integrated as part of your uh, clothing process. But um, the GPS uh, disclosure is extremely important. Each and every one of the reputable GPS companies can provide you with the GPS disclosure, and uh, you should demand it from your provider and make sure that your customers are signing on. And another uh, important point in GPS, obviously, is a location-based service. That's, that's what we all do. And sometimes you're going to get calls from the police saying, hey, this car was involved, or the owner of this car is subject to um, some kind of uh, police um, um, investigation. We think it was involved in crime, in stolen, in murder. We had all kinds of horror stories that we can really think about. Make sure one or two things happen. Either you divert it to a GPS company to help you deal with the law enforcement, or the other thing, Make sure that you're getting either a subpoena or a search warrant. Never, ever, ever provide location-based information with privacy information to law enforcement. Because assuming that you're a married couple and now you repossess my car, I can tell her, call you and say, hey, this is officer so-and-so, my badge is so-and-so, I'm dealing with a stolen car, can you give me the location? If you're gonna give the location, you can be part of worst case scenario of somebody finding the car when you shouldn't. Uh, sorry, that's the easy part. The worst case scenario can be involved in a domestic situation. Maybe a husband is looking for the wife. You never know what's the story behind it. So, as I said, make sure that either your GPS company is involved and helping you sorting through the situation, meaning getting the subpoena, getting the search warrant. Call the police station to verify that the badge number and the case number are legit. When you do that, always call the bank line. Don't rely on the, on the mobile number that the person on the other line is giving you because then you lose the signal. So there is um, a lot of tricky parts with dealing with uh, GPS location information. Keep in mind, privacy is a big, big challenge. You can't share this information with nobody else. 
to make sure you need to make sure that your employees are on the point of information that they should. So um, this is a very important um, uh, part. We always recommend to dealers to document all those things as well. So in case somebody is asking the question, you have the reasoning behind it, you have the subpoena or the search warrant, so everything is documented and uh, you have everything in place. The blind spot monitoring is make sure that you have a clear policy at your dealership that your employees know what they need to do because you can't tell them that you're in the class and they do But you don't do anything with it at the dealership, it means nothing. So you need to have written policies and procedures and as I said earlier, training is a very important um, part. So, any questions so far? What we see when we look at uh, lawsuits or problems that uh, big dealers, small dealers are having with the legal side. Um, one of them is disclosure issues. We already talked about the importance of disclosure and how important it is to make sure that, uh, that they are signed. Uh, we spoke about privacy issues. Make sure that only people that should see GPS location can see GPS location. I'll give you a simple example. Um, when your technician is activating or installing the GPS device, they see the rotation of the car. But that's totally fine. If the car that is under your inventory, the location is most likely of your lot, there's no privacy issue. But make sure that your installer or technicians do not have access to location information after the car was sold. Because they shouldn't be able to see where Joe Smith or Brian Smith or anybody else lives, works, spend their time. So make sure there is a big differentiation between uh, the people that can see. Uh, next one is procedural issues. We saw a big lawsuit against, um, that is now pending against uh, US Auto Sales. Some of the challenges that they had is that they were disabling cars before customers were late. Um, they were, how was left disabled after customers submitted the payment. So all those things can be fixed by training of your employees. And the other very important question to ask your uh, GPS provider is if they are integrated with your DMS. Because if there is an integration between the GPS and the DMS, many of those procedural issues are going away because it's all happening automatically in the back end and there is no human aspect to it of like, oh, she's driving a red car, I'm going to disable her car quicker than I'm going to disable the blue car. Those things should never uh, happen. The last one is GPS data interrupt violation, which is um, which is also a big um, big issue. So as we said, the key elements of uh, any GPS uh, compliance is dealing in two levels. The first one is the GPS technology. Can your GPS help you? Can they do that or they can't do that? I was just mentioning the, the, the uh, division between an uh, installer that can see the devices on day one versus can they see the devices after the power sold. This is a GPS capability that should be resolved in the level of their software. So it's a very important thing. The second thing are policies and procedures. Again, super important, your GPS provider can and should help you do that. How can they help you do that? Um, I know that uh, we as uh, other companies, we can provide you with a GPS policy. So it's basically uh, taking who can do what, when they can do it, under what circumstances, what are the business rules. Make sure that everything is documented and keep it in your uh, dealership. And uh, you, the most important thing, again, train your people um, on it. Then you have the user management. You need to audit, make sure that your employees are doing what they're supposed to do. And when it's GPS related, sometimes even more important, make sure that they are not doing what they're not supposed to do. Going back to my Eddie Bray friend that, oh, I just wanted to work with that. No. And, and then you have the collection team. The collection team, of course, the GPS is one of the tools in their arsenal to collect more money and make sure that they either bring the payments or eventually everything, they lost all, they lost all attempts, they bring back the collateral. So make sure that your collection team is trained because they are the ones that are in front of the customer and are exposed to the customer. Make sure that they know what they're doing, that they're trained, that the link of that they're using with the customer. Oh, if you're not going to pay me by tomorrow, I'm going to disable your car. No, that's a big no. And you need to make sure that they're all saying the same thing and that they are following what is your philosophy and what you think uh, should happen. So, compliance. And I have an attorney in the room. <laughs> 
I don't need to drive to this from home, assuming that all your employees are working on site. So you can manage all those things and uh, help protect uh, your dealership. One very important thing that time after time I see with uh, happening with dealers that they do not disable employees access to employees that were terminated or they left. Uh, make sure that your exit process, same thing that you disable their email access or you disable their access to your uh, uh, payroll port portal or anything else, make sure that you disable their access to your GPS because you don't want to have uh, a leader employee signing in and sending commands that you don't want to. A password change reminder that's uh, extremely important um, and that ties into the safeguard rules. Uh, make sure that your GPS provider is compliant and is up to par with the safeguard rules. Alerts and reports. You're going to be surprised how many dealers are still allowing their employees to do Gmail and then to Hotmail, uh, AOL accounts. Make sure that all those uh, pieces of information are going on in the corporate email. The reason is that if you terminate somebody or they leave, you don't want them to leave and still have all the reports and the alerts in their personal email account. You want to be in control and in charge of the email account where those alerts and reports uh, were sent to. So that's um, very important um, as well. And access and audit, so basically it's um, the user activity audit, the vendor audit I mentioned earlier. We get usually to the month of September that you guys get it as well. Tons of emails with questionnaires from uh, certain uh, dealers. Usually it's the bigger one. They are checking that, um, that you didn't, um, didn't have any issues. Uh, compliance with the collection team, as I said, very important. Make sure that your team is trained. Make sure that they know when they can track a vehicle. Um, they shouldn't track somebody if they're not paid. And the fact that somebody was good to me on the phone doesn't give me the legitimate thing to go and see what they're looking for. You can track people because they're late on the payment, it's totally fine. You can track people because they're lapsed on their insurance, as long as it has its limits of disclosure. But you can track just because I was good on the phone, for example. Uh, start the disable. In certain states, uh, it's considered as a constructive repo. Make sure that you make it, that you're checking where the car is located before you use the start and interrupt. Uh, make sure that it's not going to be on reserve, for example, before you send the start or interrupt, that it's not on an army base, that it's not in the state of Nevada, for example. Uh, so start or interrupt, in my personal opinion, is I'm not a big fan of automating it through EMSs, but again, totally fine if you decide to do it. But uh, just check what's going on with the car before you pull the trigger on it. Uh, if you're financing cars and the car is now in uh, Wisconsin, you need to treat it differently than if the car is in Ohio. And from past experience, judges will look at the location of the car for the rules and regulation versus the origination of the loan. So even if the loan was originated in Ohio, but right now Mr. Carpenter is in Nevada, they will look at the loan and regulations in Nevada. So make sure you know where the car is before you do, uh, do anything. Uh, we spoke about the stolen vehicle, uh, mileage tracking. Most GPSs are tracking mileage. It's very helpful for you. It's not a reason to repossess the car, but it's very important to know who is abusing your vehicle. And uh, then when you need to make a decision, do I want to work with this person or I don't, you see, if I'm driving 10,000 miles a month, you're probably going to be less likely to work with me if I'm back on the payment versus someone that drives a thousand miles a month in a month. So um, that's an important thing. And make sure to terminate GPSs. If somebody paid off the car, if the car was involved in an accident, and now insurance took, uh, took over and it's their collateral, and it's not yours anymore, make sure to terminate the GPS, because otherwise you're tracking somebody that you shouldn't. So that's a very important uh, point as well. Um, so then we have the customer action and behavior. So you decide uh, you decide uh, to report a car, but the device is not working. Customer just decided to, to disable the, the GPS. What are you gonna do? So certain GPS companies will provide you with an alert that the device was tampered with. Uh, this alert is basically allowing you to be proactive if somebody is tampering with the device. Uh, generally speaking, no GPS can do messages. No GPS company can do messages and say, "Oh, my devices are tampered." There is no no such thing. 
But there are proactive tools that the GPS can alert you if the device was tampered with. So you can take measures and you can make a better decision who you want to work with and, um, and who you don't. So make sure that you have someone that gets those temper alerts that is monitoring them, that are looking at them. For some of them, you can say, hey, if I went to auto zoom to get a new battery for my car and they disconnected the car battery, that will trigger a power off message from the device because it just lost battery. But you can see the location, you can see the device are tracking again after two, three hours, and obviously it's a legit power loss. But if you see that this power loss is coming from a non-stereo shop in Florida, there is a location by the flea market on Sunrise Boulevard, they are known to remove the GPS devices. They, nobody can take them out from them. But they, so if you see a power loss coming from there, most likely it's a vicious power loss and somebody is tempering with the device. You need to take action. And Customer, uh, customer is being uh, driving too many miles, they're doing DoorDash, Uber, basically they're using the vehicle that they bought from you, most likely for consumer usage, they're using it to do a side job or a main job, I don't know, one or the other. And in the state of Texas, for example, it was determined that it's not a reason for repossession, but again, it's an important piece of information for you to know when you're dealing with this customer. Make sure that you have all the information exposed to you and most GPSs are uh, provided with, um, um, with the mileage today. A, a very important point from a uh, compliance point of view for people that are using such a staple and open reminder is if a customer uh, files bankruptcy, doesn't matter which type of bankruptcy, you cannot use such a interrupt and you cannot use payment reminder anymore. So make sure that your GPS allows you to put a block or remove those features on this specific device if the customer was um, using bankruptcy. Because otherwise, you get a phone call from uh, Mr. Lawyer, <coughs> and they're going to say, hey, the customer filed bankruptcy. Why did you disable the car? So again, make sure that your GPS allows you this level of protection that you're not getting these problems with um, people that are in uh, bankruptcy. Um, somebody who did this uh, presentation about GPS in the morning was telling me about the installation. So we're always joking that the unit is only as good as the installation. I personally believe that our unit is the best. Uh, Josh believes that his unit is the best. It doesn't matter. In both cases, the unit is only as good as the installation. Make sure that your technicians are trained. Make sure that you don't hand the box of GPS to the guy that is washing the car. No offense, nothing against the guy that is washing the car. Don't get me wrong. But usually they are not very good with wires. They don't know how to connect the wires in the right way that it's going to hold for a long time. Um, make sure that they're using the right tools and the right pieces of equipment. Don't use those quick connectors in order to make a wire-to-wire -wire connection with the pickup because it's not going to sustain for a long time. When cars are driving, the roads, there is not always nice and smooth. There's going to be bumps in the road. There's going to be rain. There's going to be uh, dirt roads. If the installation was not done properly and wiring was not done properly, the unit is not going to work for a long time. So please, please, please make sure that your technician and your installers are trained and they're doing a good job. Because otherwise, you're just going to end up with a unit that is not working. And it's not always the fault of the GPS company. Sometimes it is, but not all. We spoke about the fact that you do need to terminate access to employees that are no longer with you or working for you. Um, I remember when I just work, started working for the company a long time ago, uh, there was a dealer in Austin that they terminated an employee and they didn't terminate their access to GPS. And he just decided to take revenge and he logged in at night and he just started to disable cars. And then he went the extra step and he changed the information that is associated. So when you thought that device ABC is associated with the Volkswagen Vienna, he changed it to a Toyota Corolla. So he created a whole mess for his dealership. Um, he was pretty lucky because we were able to recover the information from the backup of the system from the night before. But please make sure that you're terminating access to people that are no longer employees of the dealership. And a customer that, as I said earlier, a device that is not working can be many, many problems. It can be GPS challenge, it can be installation challenge, it can be a car that is located in an area of no cellular reception. In a case, 
thing that I like that he says that when you don't, you know, when that driver drives off the car, you don't know where it's at, and if it ends up in the impound lot, which unfortunately these types of customers, the car parking tickets, you know, all kinds of whatever reasons the car gets towed, um, we get cleaned up, and that's the main part. That's what I got. Thank you. Yeah, it's true, as the presentation title says, large car. Be aware, of course, and those things will happen to you anyway, GPS, yes or no, cars are going to be impounded, cars are going to be an accident. No, the question is, how quickly are going to know about it? That's great to know, but there's all these legal ramifications. Yes. Too. But if you, you want to talk about the state uh, regulations, for example, Another two hours, and I can go over that. Yeah, really if I really want to, <laughs> <laughs> like if you really want to have a bike here. Yeah. <laughs> so your GPS provider will tell you everything that you need to know about the impound lot. Yes. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.